Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to review the Ender 3 V2. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Ender 3 V2 3D printer. I pre-ordered this printer on the day they started taking orders, and a couple of months later, it finally arrived. I was able to buy this thanks to subscribers like you who put up with the ads on the videos and use the channel support links in the description. So, thanks again everybody. You were instrumental in making this happen. Now, when I got it, I made a video unboxing it, putting it together, and getting a first print on it. It's definitely a some assembly required printer. The base is built for you, but you'll need to bolt the Z-axis uprights to the base, bolt the X-axis components together, put the X-axis on the Z-axis, and bolt that top crossbar into place. It's not super difficult, but it's also not as easy as some other printers I've had where the X-axis arm was already built, or those where the entire X and Z axes are already assembled and you just bolt it to the base. I call those the four bolts and done kind. And by the way, that unbox, build, and first print video that I made also serves as a detailed assembly guide. So if you're getting an Ender 3 V2 and you want to see step by step how to put it together, you might want to give that video a watch. There's a card up here that'll take you right to it, but it's also on the end screen of this video and there's a link to it in the description. So now that I've been using this printer for a little while, I think it's time to share my impressions. I'll talk a little bit about how we got to the V2 and some of its features. Then I'll show you what I don't like about it, what I do like about it, and where I think it could use some improvement. So the Ender 3 V2 is at first glance largely similar to the Ender 3 Standard and Ender 3 Pro 3D printers. All three have similar frames made from aluminum extrusions in a traditional i3 style layout. The Pro layout evolved from the standard by using a 4040 aluminum extrusion for the Y axis instead of a 2040 extrusion, a higher quality mean well power supply, and by flipping the electronics enclosure so that the cooling fan is on the bottom rather than the top. Moving the cooling fan addressed an issue with bits of filament and other debris getting into the electronics enclosure. And the V2 layout has evolved from the Pro layout by moving the mean well power supply from the side down to a horizontal position at the base of the printer, adding a tool drawer to the front of the printer, and replacing the monochrome LCD with a larger color LCD in a vertical instead of a horizontal orientation. The Ender 3 V2 is a fused filament fabrication or fused deposition modeling 3D printer. That is, it melts filament to produce objects in three dimensions. It follows a typical Cartesian 3D printer layout in which the bed moves back and forth on the Y axis, the nozzle moves left and right on the X axis, and the entire X axis is raised up on the Z axis during the course of a print. This configuration is commonly called a bed slinger because of the motion of the print bed. Its overall size is 475 millimeters by 470 millimeters by 620 millimeters, and it has a print volume of 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 250 millimeters. It uses 1.75 millimeter filament and comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The spec sheet says it prints PLA, TPU, and PETG. You should also be able to print ABS and other filaments as well. It uses a Bowden style extruder where the extruder motor is mounted at one side of the X axis and feeds filament to the nozzle through a length of PTFE tubing. The bed can be set to a maximum temperature of 110 degrees C, and the nozzle can be set to a maximum temperature of 260 degrees C. But, remember that PTFE tubing? On the Ender 3 V2, that tubing reaches all the way down into the heater block and comes into contact with the nozzle. This is known as a PTFE lined hot end, and this is fairly common in 3D printers. But, temperatures above 240 degrees C will damage the tubing and could potentially release toxic fumes. So even though the printer will let you set the nozzle temperature to 260 degrees C, you should probably avoid doing that. And the Ender 3 V2 has an injection molded fan shroud instead of the folded steel one, easy to use belt tensioners for the X and Y axes, 
and a 32-bit mainboard with silent stepper drivers running the Marlin 2.0 firmware. I saw an article from Creality a few weeks ago indicating that they've moved the entire Ender 3 product line, that is the standard, the Pro, and the V2, to using 32-bit mainboards. Now, having said that, the 32-bit boards that they're using on the standard and the Pro are not using the silent stepper drivers. You also get a nice complement of ball end hex keys, some wrenches for adjusting the eccentric nuts on the V-slot wheels, as well as replacing the nozzle. There's also a putty knife for stabbing stubborn prints, an acupuncture needle for making the nozzle feel better when it's clogged, and a nice pair of flush cutters. It also comes with an 8GB microSD card and a USB card reader. And there's a sample coil of filament, although on mine the filament was broken in a few places. Well, how about a little show and tell? I've printed several models on this printer and I've been very happy with how they turned out. I printed my desktop trash can, scaled up to the maximum size possible within the build volume. This is a usably large functional print that I keep near the printers. Now, due to the settings that I used to strengthen the print, this took about a day to complete. Now, these settings also caused this fast transition rainbow PLA to have these super sharp transitions between the colors. In hindsight, I probably should have used a different filament, but hey, it's just a trash can. And I printed this rocket plane model, which is designed to print in vase mode, also scaled to the full height of the print volume. This came out really nice, and because it prints in vase mode, it only took a couple hours to print. I also printed Louise Drigger's Aria Dragon. She came out great in this metallic blue PETG. And then there's this nice flying disc that I designed in Tinkercad. I printed this in yellow TPU from Sobol. It took about six hours to print because I printed it at 20 millimeters per second. Now, it took me a few tries to figure out the best speed for printing the TPU on the Ender 3 V2. So I did have a failure in which the TPU bunched up in the extruder section. Since it was no longer flowing to the nozzle, of course, there are some areas where it just didn't lay down material. But I quickly pulled the filament back out, reloaded it, and after turning the print speed way down using the settings on the screen, it finished. Now, I wanted to print this in TPU for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think that PLA or PETG would really survive the kind of impacts that this gets. And two, I wanted to show that on a completely stock Ender 3 V2, you could successfully print TPU. Now, apart from using a little bit of glue stick in the center of the bed, when I printed Aria in PETG, everything else I printed has just been on the textured glass build surface, with nothing but a quick wipe of isopropyl alcohol to clean it off before printing. When I used the glue stick with the PETG, it wasn't to make sure that the PETG would stick. It was to make sure that it would let go. Sometimes PETG and glass want to stick together like best friends who haven't seen each other in forever. So sometimes you'll have a hard time getting them apart. And sometimes you can't, because sometimes PETG sticks so well to the glass that when you try to remove the print, the glass breaks, and you have a chunk missing from the bed and a matching chunk permanently adhered to the print. Also, sometimes I say sometimes too much, but only sometimes. So for PETG, using glue stick first makes your glass last. All right, let's get into the didn't like, did like part of the review. I'll start with the things that I didn't like. First off, the overall noise level is still pretty high because of the fans. Despite the silent printing claims, it's not silent. And on my printer, the hot end fan died after a few prints. Now, Creality provided a replacement fan under warranty, but it took about three weeks to arrive, and in the meantime, I bought a replacement fan from Amazon and used that instead. The replacement from Creality can be used the next time the fan goes out, because the sad fact of the matter is, it's not a question of if a fan will die, but when. So, having a spare on hand is nice. Now, the textured glass sometimes holds the prints a little too well but I've never had an issue where I couldn't remove a print after applying sufficient force. I realize that may sound like praise in disguise, because I've seen posts in Facebook groups where some people have a really hard time getting prints to stick to this surface. But for me, even after the bed is completely cooled down, PLA prints don't always release. And the included putty knife print removal tool can scratch the glass, so you really have to be careful when you're using it. Now, about the screen. The user interface doesn't use the full width of the screen to display file names when you're selecting a file to print. Also, the LCD screen was designed for horizontal viewing rather than vertical viewing, and as a result, the contrast of items on the screen can look different depending on whether you're seeing it from the left or the right side. 
and a few elements in the user interface are oddly named or misspelled. Lastly, the current firmware doesn't understand the concept of folders, so you can't organize project files into folders on the microSD card. But now, here are the things that I really like about the Ender 3 V2. The silent stepper drivers make the motion system quiet, so although the fans are loud, they're really all you hear when the printer is in operation. The textured glass bed is flat and it holds the prints really well. A flat bed makes it easier to get a good first layer. The X and Y belt tensioners make it easy to keep the belts tight. On previous versions of the Ender 3, you'd have to loosen some bolts and apply a prying force to the belt idler pulley and hold it there while tightening the bolts. With these tensioners, you just turn the knob. It's super easy. Now, I wasn't sure that I would like the drawer on the front of the printer, but I gotta admit, it's kind of grown on me to the point that I've been looking around on Thingiverse for a printable drawer to install on my other enders. The printer handles PLA and PETG very well, and it can print TPU successfully, but printing speeds need to be really slow. The new user interface on the color LCD screen is well laid out and easy to use. While I don't really see a difference in result between a printer with an 8-bit board versus a 32-bit board, the use of a 32-bit board on the Ender 3 V2 should allow for additional firmware features as time goes on. Going forward, some features of the Marlin 2.0 firmware may be 32-bit only, either due to their need for computing power or storage space. In other words, they simply wouldn't work or wouldn't fit on an 8-bit board. And I suspect that eventually Marlin firmware will cease development for 8-bit boards. And when that happens, you'll be happy to have a printer with a 32-bit board on board. Oh, and firmware updates for this thing are super easy. You just put the update file on an SD card, turn on the printer with the card inserted, and the update happens automatically. Now, here are a few things that I think would make this printer even better. Although, to be fair, the Ender 3 V2 is a pretty great printer right out of the box. But... I think it needs quieter, more durable fans. And a screen optimized for viewing in the vertical orientation would fix the contrast changes that occur if you're looking at the screen from different angles. And finally, a firmware update could address the wording and typographical errors, increase the amount of screen width for displaying file names, and add the ability to see the contents of folders on the microSD card. So that's the Ender 3 V2. In my opinion, it's a good, inexpensive printer. Assembly is a little more involved than some printers, but it's easy enough to build, and it works well. In its stock configuration, it can print a variety of filament types, including flexible filaments like TPU. Controlling the printer with the LCD screen is super easy. Now, with the fan noise, it's not as quiet as the product info page on Creality's site might imply. But the printer's movements are quiet, and that's a nice change from having to listen to loud fans and loud stepper motors. I can kind of tune out the white noise from the fans. All in all, it's a machine that I'm happy to own. Okay, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And I also want to say thanks to everyone who subscribes, and everyone who uses the links in the description, and especially everyone who supports what I do. You're all amazing, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and feel free to check out these other videos here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.